All right, hey, back with another installment. It's been two weeks. Yeah, roughly, about two roughly weeks. Roughly two yeah. weeks. Um, we picked up another little small haul. Uh, I don't know how to get more views on these. We got, got everything tagged and people are commenting and they're liking our videos. And so hopefully the more videos we put up, the more views we get. Yeah, I It'd mean, be nice. it's great because we look forward to doing these videos. I want to also, if it's okay, give a shout out to my buddy Ed out in Michigan. He's at a show right now. Uh, it's Saturday the 14th. Uh, he's looking around, he says, you know what, and which we're going to hit upon now with what you have. Yeah. says, uh, copper's hot, bronze hot, can't find a lot of things out there as far as 181s. And we wanted to talk about that too since our last video. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, we're going to hit upon today uh, a couple different eras. Uh, we had promised about some silver, and we're going to hit on some copper and some bronze today. Back to that barn find, too. I spoke to that guy the other day, and I left my number, and so hopefully he calls me back. It's one of those things where I have to wait for him to call me, because if I call him too often, he's just going to say, go he, screw yourself, I don't want any part of it, or he's going to end up pulling his own stuff out. And he's going to think you're too anxious. Yeah, yeah. you know, there's something that's got to be in there. Why does this guy keep on calling me? So it's a lose-lose kind of situation for me. I just have to sit here and wait, and I'm not a big fan of waiting at all. So... But yeah, that's our story. So let's start off today with uh, what I picked up. Got a couple of books. Picked up uh, She-Hulk number one. Uh, got it in 9.8 with white pages. Big fan, of course. You know I talk about that all the time. But, you know, I kind of like this book. And I, I had one before that was a 9.2. And I don't feel that there's any value in getting a 9.2 or a 9.4 in this book. Possibly not even a 9.6. A 9.6 is like 150 bucks, right? Right in that range there. Well, that's the that's the thing what happens with these books. When you get them into that copper era, even some of the bronze. I mean, the higher the grade, the more value, the more you're going to get back off the book. It used to be years ago, and a lot of you, you know, chime in on this if you agree or disagree, but we used to be satisfied with 8.5s, 9.92s. Yeah. Now, because of the market trend, now it's well, a especially great the newer grade. books, the copper and the bronze. You want to get the higher, you can get the better. Even modern books, you I want mean, to hell, get if I had if I had a two five Detective Twenty Seven, I'd still love it. Nobody would care. I mean, right. you could have a point five, you could have a coverless, nobody cares. Right. Um, now, higher the grade, the better investment, the more return you're going to get. Okay, we got that one. And this is what we were hitting upon. Movie coming out. So, we've got a nine six, uh, amazing three hundred, first Venom. Of course, everybody knows that. If you're watching this, you already know that. But uh, I would have liked to get a 9.8. Can't afford a 9.8. <laughs> for $2,000 or more now. Yeah, so I can't afford it. So I jump in a 9.6. I'll always try and get a white page book over anything. And that's what my buddy Ed is doing right now. He said there was a raw copy out in Michigan. Raw. Now, you know how to grade it, but they wanted $650, $700 for it. For a raw copy. For a raw copy. And with the promise that... Not even a promise, because as you know, everybody says, I'm not a professional grader. Right. You don't know what you're going to get on the book. So get them in the case, unless you really know how to grade, you got a good feeling about it. 96 is a really, really good grade. Do professional, do professional graders say, hey, I'm a professional grader, I guarantee you get an 8.5 on this? No. That's I don't see anybody ever making that statement, unless it's in a case. Unless it's in a case, and you know, and sometimes we even question it in the case. So... Right now with a 9.6, with white pages, keep it in the case. It's a solid, high, high grade book with a lot of potential, a lot of return. All you have to do is throw that caveat that I'm not a professional grader, and then your ass is covered. Which Take will, pictures. Yeah, which will lead us into our discussion after we show the books. Yeah. All right, so another one here. And I had this book before. It wasn't in this kind of quality at all. It's a Luke Cage number one, seven five white pages. I picked this up. Sharp book, and if you're not watching a Netflix series, then... There's something wrong with you because second se the second season was better than the first season. So I picked up this. We always put them in the Mylar bags too. I think they make them pop. If even just for me, when I go through my stuff and I look at them, I see them in a sharp Mylar. It, it just makes it look that much sexier, doesn't it? It does because the bags you get back from CGC or the other grading companies are dull. They don't bring out or enhance basically the book after it's graded yeah. in the case. And so we get these here locally. But you could get them anywhere, online or at your local comic shop. So that's from 1972, the year of that book. So for me, getting a 7.5 in that book, I think it's fine. I, I don't know. What's a 9.8 you think valued in that book? Oh, thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, so I'm not interested in getting a 9.8. I'm interested in getting a book that's solid, got a nice cover appeal to it, and it's got white pages, and I'm happy with that at 7.5 in that, especially for that year. You got to remember one thing. I mean, if you're a collector, you're happy to get it just to have it, to own it, because you're, you're a collector. 
if you're a collector slash investor, and then you have to work around the ways in order to try to find it. But if you're a collector such as we are, we're happy to get them in those grades that we try to get them in. And again, years ago, we used to be, again, we'll hit upon it again, we were all satisfied. And be satisfied with what you have. Again, it's what you can afford. Yeah. And it's not even availability anymore, folks. It's affordability. Um, certain certain books, again, yes, the golden age, silver, it's availability. It's all about the dollars and how much you can afford. And I'm not buying books just to flip them exclusively. I'm right. buying them for my own personal collection. So for me to have those books in that grade. You enjoy them. I enjoy them. And I get to go through and I look at them once in a while and get excited about it and put the cover back on. And you remember, if you do want to get it in high grade, you have a starting point. It's a stepping stone. And you work from that point on. Be right. satisfied with what you have. You take your 7.5, you trade it with other stuff, you get an 8.5. You get an 8.5. So on and so forth. And that's the name of the game. Is don't We talked about it before in videos in the past. Don't be afraid to trade You know, if you want to. If you're happy, by all means, be happy. Here's a small little book, too, that I can get. I have just happen to get this before the increase. We're going now, as we had touted, about silver. It's an amazing one, CGC 5.5. Five. Um, Sexy book. It's a tough book now because, as we, we know, AF-15s are above the realm of reach for a majority of fans and collectors uh, of, the, of this hobby. So what do they do? They go to the Amazing One. Now, Amazing One, as we've seen, price jumps on the books in mid-grade, low-grade, higher-grade have escalated. A 5.5, five, and a lot of you, again, chime in on this. I mean, six, eight months ago, 5.5 five was like seven, eight grand. Wow. Now, you're looking at 14, 15, 16,000 for when's the five, book, five. When's the When's the new uh, Overstreet coming out? It should be coming out uh, this Wednesday, coming up, as far as on uh, the delivery schedule. How exciting. And the Overstreet, a lot of you uh, may not agree, but it does have an impact. It doesn't do what the market reports or GPA does on a daily basis. But what it does, it does set the standard and tone. If he increases the price range on the high end on your top 20, even your top 5 grails, it is going to have an, an, an impact it's on your going, lower It's going to have an effect because what happens, it does bring up the lower end. Right. Okay, so... A tough book to get, folks. Uh, a grail, or is bordering that grail status. Um, amazing is amazing. You can't lose out on Spidey. Everybody loves Spidey. How can you not? I mean, we're so AF15s, even in low grade, which a lot of people find if you have them, people who do flip are having a tough time to a certain extent, well, even with the lower ends, because it's the affordability again. On a lower end status, on a two, what were we looking at sixteen grand? What was the one that I saw when I was out in uh, out in Cincinnati? Remember I called you on that? What yeah, was it? it was it was uh, basically a three, and it was almost twenty grand. Yeah. So you know you're looking at threes three years ago, they were nowhere near that status of twenty thousand dollars. One fives are like eleven, twelve thousand. So they jump onto the amazing one. Can't do the amazing one, then you step down and you start getting into the other stuff that you know you can afford speaking of grails how about an x-men one in uh, cgc 6.5 old label cgc if this was a pgx 6.5 would you have would you have got it would you have purchased it if it was a pgx it would probably would have been graded higher then you have to make the determination if you were to crack it out of pgx what would the grade be um Again, the price on it would have been priced basically a PGX lower, but PGX tends to grade higher. I think we all know that. I would possibly have gotten it depending on the on the price and, and what how I, it looks and how it looks and what I could get out of it off of CGC. Well, I, I don't, I can't agree with people like saying they'll get a PGX and it's a six five and say, and they're not asking CGC six five prices. No, you can't do that. I mean, there's, there's but they a, do it. There's a difference. I mean, yeah. there's a difference between a Corvette and a Chevette, right? Yeah. So now you're looking at, and not to knock PGX down because they do great. They've been in the business just as long as CGC has. But the thing is, we know what the standards usually are settled upon, and that's usually CGC. It's the market that settled, that sets the standard on CGC. That's and the way it is. it's the tone of where they're going. They've been around for 18 years, uh, so nearly two decades. So you go with that. So there's those two there. 
Hey, you want to talk about the the 181 thing that's happening currently on eBay? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, you know, we I had a 181 in the last video. Um, again, very happy with the silver, very happy with the bronze and the copper. Um, we will have more silver keys and grails coming up. The 181, I've noted today, raw copies out of the case are selling just as much as the ones that are in the case. Going by speculation on the bidders, that it's going to be a higher grade when they when they send it in the CGC. And when you look at the pictures and look at the pictures, folks, because 181 is an anomaly. It's a book that is not rare. There's, there's look on the census for CGC, even PGX or CBCS. There's thousands of them graded, but it is Wolverine's first full appearance. People love the book. They love the cover. They love what it represents. Price escalation on this book has gone crazy, even from the last three weeks. You know, I hate to go off on something else completely different. I don't understand the whole difference between cameo and full appearance. Because isn't, isn't Darkseid's first appearance in that Superboy, which is actually just a cameo, but they call it his first appearance, and then the 181 is a first full appearance, but the 180's is actual cameo? I think as you have the one or two vignettes at the end of 180, and I agree with what you're saying, but you know, when you look at the book, is I think it's what sells this book, is that cover. When we when you take a look at that cover with the reds and Wolverine jumping out at you know oh, it's sick it's a beautiful it, cover. It, it, I deem it and it should be deemed it may be deemed someday a classic, and when you're looking at this book and whose heart doesn't stop when they see it at a show in a box, or at someone's yard yeah. sale which you'll never see again yeah but you know when you see that book and you see the cover and how it pops up and I think that's why that book does so well as being the full he's right. There is a cameo with one vignette or panel prior to it in 180. The book escalation is when you look at the price and how it has increased. I was looking today as a raw copy online on eBay, which we kind of all look at. First of all, 99.9% .9 follow of and everything. It, it drives me nuts to see the prices people are asking. A raw copy at $5,100. I right sold now. my 6.5 white pages last year for $1,000. Today, to get that 6.5 again, it'd be what, 2300 2400 to get it's, the same book? It's within the $2,000 to $2,500 grade, so it averages around 2200 Yeah, bucks. it makes me sick. It really, it really disturbs me a little bit. And that was a package deal, because at the time it was a 129 and an 8.5. Yeah. And the 129 wasn't moving as it was either last year. I mean, it was moving, but not like what we see now with bronze. So what does that tell you with, my opinion, the top four bronze, which is the 181, the Star Wars variant? Which is the 35 um, center. 35 center. The 129. And, and you're looking, to me, the House of Secrets. Nice. And we'll throw the giant size. Giant size, yeah. So the five, the five top. Five, yeah. We'll throw the giant size in there because it's Wolverine's second full appearance. Yeah, but it's also Colossus, Storm, and Nightcrawler's first appearance. So that doesn't hurt. But it goes back to Wolverine's second full appearance. You know, yeah. the, who's everybody's favorite? You, so, I mean, you're looking. Well, now it's Deadpool and Wolverine. Mine's Holly Berry as Storm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. big fan. Yeah. But, uh, well, we got one out there. So now what we're looking at, um, he also liked the Catwoman movie, too. I know. <laughs> but what we're looking at is 181s. If you don't have it, try to get it. You're never going to lose it. But don't get money. suckered into these people on eBay but, that yeah. are asking. They're starting off. What did I have? I had a guy the other day. I offered him. He, he was asking 3400 for a seven for a 7.5. I sent him an offer of 22 and he quickly declined it. And I wrote back after he said, no, you're way too low. I said, well, you're $1,000 overpriced on this book. So I thought 2200 was a fair offer. And it, it, it was a fair offer, but here's the catch and here's the problem. Two months ago, it was a fair offer. Now, because of the sales with people bidding on these books, they've gone up to that $3,000 range. Is this going to hurt the market? No, because you know why? Is it like trying to get a Shaquille O'Neal rookie card way back in the day when they started off at $100 and then the market just shit the bed? Well, is this what's going to happen in the comic books? No, what happened is a ripple effect. And what's going, to ha what's going to happen is when a lot of people are looking into Golden Age books, and again, you know, agree, disagree. We love comments because it gives us something to talk about for the next video, you know, upcoming. It's a ripple effect. Those who are buying Golden Age within the last 20 years... We're older market people who are basically our age. Now, when you're hitting, because we're 50, and him, he's a little older, but we're 50, and what we, what's going to happen in 15 years, we're 65. But in 15 years, the buyers now are hitting 
I think the modern, the copper, right. and the bronze, they're going to shift where the silver becomes the new gold. Because the buyers, I could take, literally, folks, I could take, let's say, for a lot of you know what uh, a Startling 49 is, which is a classic Schomburg cover. I could take that and an X-Men 1. And I could put them on the table. 99.9% .9 of the people are going to hit the X-Men 1. Not because it's rare, because it's an X-Men 1, and a lot of people don't know what a Startling 49 is. Well, it's more notorious. More, It's more people recognize it. It's movies. It's toys. Yeah. It's cartoons. It's clothing. So what happens is the Hulk 181, as we see now, is becoming to that grail status for that era. And it always has been, but with the price increases in the price influx on it, it's that ripple effect. The kids today, and, and we call them kids because we're, they're younger than us, the ones that are in their 20s... Are it, bidding these books up. They want them. This is their grail. It's not an amazing one. It's not an AF-15 because those price ranges are out of their reach. So we're looking at this is what's happening. And you're going to see that um, 20 years from now, 10%, I always said 10, 15% of the market will love Golden Age. They always will. They'll know what it is. I'm not a fan. It does nothing for me. I could see boxes and boxes of it. If I don't see a key in there, I don't want any part of it. But you see, and it's, it's determination of what is a key because a key could be just the first appearance. It could be the cover. It could be both. It could be a lot yeah. of effect. Yeah. But a lot of things will, it, for Golden Age, the key could be just that it's rare and we don't see it on the sense it's going to leave three to five copies. Um, that would be bad to miss one of those in a box and say, ah, I'm not interested in it. <laughs> but that's what happens because you're going to miss it in a box. I'm going to miss it in a box. A lot of people are because we don't follow what it is as much as we should be as a collector, as a fan base, or even as an investor for a lot of you who are out there. 10% of that market does, of which is going to lead us to what uh, is going to be on our next, next segment as far as more silver uh, coming up, more grails. Uh, more mega keys. And we'll see where the Overstreet Guide sets the value for the Amazing Fantasy 15 coming out in a couple, coming out Wednesday. And on our next video, we'll cover some of that and we'll see what we got in the next video. I like to just shop eBay and whatever catches my eye, I, I pick it up. So uh, Do shows, like we said before, do conventions. Two yard sales. Okay, what are you going to lose? Maybe half a Saturday or a Sunday. But I'm a big fan of stopping at a yard sale. Why not? Go you to can even drive by, stick your head out the window, go any comic books. If they say no, you keep going. It's very simple. You never know. You, at least you go off for a drive. You get out. It's nice weather. It's summer everywhere. So go and enjoy it and see what you can find. But, again, as far as Hulk 181s, I mean, we had to talk about that topic. It's fun to see these prices go up if you have it. If you don't, it really sucks. Yeah. But don't, like Carm said, don't get suckered into getting a 3.5 for $2,000. And on that note, we'll call this a day. We'll call it a day. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks yeah. for watching. Keep the comments coming, please. We really enjoy them, and we'll respond to virtually every single comment. All hey. right, guys. Hey, take care. Uh, again, we love the comments. Add good luck at the show. All, All right, right guys. Peace. All right, bye.